Hi, my name is Lance Wilkins from Tracy Bressler CPA and welcome to the first in a series of instructional videos that we have created on using sales tax in QuickBooks. This is the, um, as I say, the first in the series is kind of an overview of what areas of QuickBooks will impact sales tax and then the other two videos will get into more detail as far as setting up and, and uh, using the reporting in QuickBooks in order to create your sales tax return. So let me just go right up here to our uh, list pull down menu and then to the item list. Like many things in QuickBooks, uh, sales tax is driven by items. And if I look all the way down at the bottom of my item list, here are my sales tax items. And there are several set up here in the sample file. And if I look over here at the uh, names on the left, you can see their name for geographical locations which makes sense because there are different uh, rates for those different geographic locations that need to be uh, charged. So different customers are going to be set um, using those different sales tax items. Over here in the right hand column you see the different rates that are being used. So for instance, here we go, this one it's going to look at the invoice and all the taxable items on the invoice are going to be totaled up and then QuickBooks is going to compute the sales tax at 7.5% of that amount. So uh, it's the item that does the math and figures out uh, how much sales tax should be charged. Now there's another, another list that I uh, want to take a look at and that also comes off the list pull down menu and that is the sales tax code list. Now code list tells QuickBooks whether this item is taxable or not. So you see the first sales tax code there is taxable sales and uh, over here in this right hand column it's marked whether it's taxable or not so the first sales tax code is taxable and the other three are not taxable so if an item is marked as taxable QuickBooks is going to see that on the invoice and then it's going to look at what sales tax item is being used and it's going to charge the rate based on what percentage is in that item. If an item is taxable but the customer is a resale customer from this sales tax code list, it uh, doesn't matter what item is used and what the sales tax rate is, QuickBooks is not going to charge any sales tax for that customer because they are resale. Now we'll go into this in more detail and show you how to set this up in the next video, but that kind of gives you an overview of the difference between sales tax items and sales tax codes and how you need both of them in order to accurately compute sales tax. There's a little confusion on that sometimes with clients, so I did want to point that out. Let's take a quick look at preferences. So I'm going to go to the edit menu and then to preferences. About two-thirds of the way down here on the left is the sales tax group. And then I'm going to click on the company preferences tab. The uh, first item here on the preferences uh, section is do you charge sales tax? That's set to yes. Uh, if it had been set to no we wouldn't have even been able to look at sales tax codes and items. But So we, uh, we have that set to yes. The next section here is uh, to be sure you have a sales tax item set up. You have to have a default item that if there's no other information there's at least one sales tax item that can be used in a taxable transaction. The next section here are the sales tax codes. So taxable items by default will be taxable, non-taxable items will be non-taxable sales. That will be set. But you can set those things individually as you'll see in the next video when you actually set up your items and customers. The last in this section here is this little checkbox that says to mark a little T out to the right of the taxable invoices. Um, taxable items, I'm sorry, when you print an invoice for a customer. This section right here, when do you owe sales tax? This is one I have to look at every once in a while with clients. Uh, you notice there are two options there. One says as of invoice date, which is accrual basis, and the other says uh, upon receipt of payment, which is cash basis. We are in California. Uh, the rules in your state may be different, so if you're in a different state, you'll need to check that. But in the state of California, as much as some clients that I talk to would like to use that second setting upon receipt of payment, 
we are required to use the first one as of invoice date. Some people would really like to be able to collect the money from the customer before they have to pay those sales tax dollars to the state. Unfortunately, by law, we're not allowed to use that setting. It will be invoice date. So all of you who are in California, that's the setting you have to have. This last section right here, when do you pay sales tax, is not crucial to your sales tax setup. Uh, the main thing this is going to do is if uh, we say monthly, we pay sales tax monthly. If it's uh, the month of June and we go to look at a sales tax report, QuickBooks is going to assume we probably want to look at May because we're probably paying the sales tax for May since we pay uh, monthly. If it was April and we had this checked at quarterly and we went to do a sales tax report, QuickBooks would pull that report by default up to the first quarter of the year, January through March, assuming that we would want to look at it on a quarterly basis. Let me just show you a couple more things before we finish this video. I'm going to go to the Customer Center and then we're going to take a quick look at a customer file here. Let's pick is Christy Abercrombie. And if we look at the edit window for Christy Abercrombie, over here on the additional info tab, here is the section where we set up the sales tax information for her. So she is a taxable customer. Uh, the tax item for her is the Kings County sales tax. So we set those things in the customer file. And one more thing is we can also mark our items as taxable or non-taxable. So we do that right off the item list. If I were to edit this brass hinges item, here is the section right here where I tell QuickBooks whether this is a taxable item or not. If this were some kind of a service and I did not want to charge tax for it, I would use this non-taxable labor sales tax code, which would tell QuickBooks doesn't matter what rate is chargeable to the customer, this is a non-taxable item. Since this is a taxable item, I'm going to leave it set to tax. And that tells QuickBooks, okay, normally when I put this on an invoice, charge tax at whatever rate needs to be charged for this customer. So like I said, that's just kind of a quick overview of how uh, sales tax works in QuickBooks. Like I say, the next two videos will go into more detail as far as setting it up and then using the reports. Hope this has been useful to you and uh, check on those other videos that we have. And you might check back to our website uh, periodically because we will be adding more videos on different areas of QuickBooks and how you can use them to your best advantage. Thank you.